Measuring the power consumption of battery-operated IoT devices is tricky. In this video we will look at how to measure tiny currents and in the next video we will use this knowledge to test some new ESP32 boards. I will introduce you to the new Power Profiler Kit 2 from Nordic and compare it with other well-known tools to determine which one is the best value for your money. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Recently I got a lot of new battery-powered ESP32 boards from around the world. The most important question is, how long will they work before charging or replacing the battery? A fully charged 18650 battery has a capacity of around 3000 mAh. A typical ESP32 consumes around 100 mAh if it uses Wi-Fi. Without precautions, the battery is depleted after 30 hours. Not what we want. So in this video we will have a look at the power consumption of the ESP32 if we use deep sleep. We will find and solve problems during current measurements and learn about burden voltage. We will compare several low burden voltage current meters which are made particularly for this purpose. We will check out a typical battery operated board and you will get my verdict. Measuring the current of this Liligo T7 board is simple. We use our bench multimeter connected between the USB hub and the device and measure current, right? Let's try it out. I cut the VCC wire of this USB cable in the middle and insert my UT71D multimeter. Because I expect to measure around 100 mA, I select the mA range. For the experiment, I use the basic HTTP client example sketch. It starts without problems, but as soon as it starts to call the internet, a brownout is detected and the ESP32 crashes. Not good. First, what is a brownout? It is triggered by a low voltage of below 2.43 volts. This cannot be. My USB hub delivers 5 volts and the ESP32 board has a 3.3 volt regulator built in. So let's check. I connect my trusted oscilloscope to the 3.3 volt rail of the ESP32. And really, from time to time, the voltage has a huge dent and is below 2.43 volts. So the brownout is justified. But why does this happen? When we measure current, in reality we measure the voltage across a resistor. So how big is the resistor in my UT71D? Using my bench multimeter, I measure 6 ohms. The ESP32 consumes around 75 mA. Ohm's law says that we only lose 0.45 volts. This should not create a brownout, because the voltage regulator should be able to deal with it. So what the hell is going on? And what can be done against it? What happens if we change to the ampere range? Now it works. But of course we lose a lot of precision. Let's measure the internal resistance. Now it is much less than 1 ohms. Why does the multimeter use different resistors for different ranges? As said before, the meter measures the voltage across a resistor. The voltage meter in the UT71D has a certain sensitivity and we want to use its full capabilities. This is why the instruments switch resistors for different ranges. Like that, the voltage across the resistor is always similar. If we select microamperes, the resistor is 500 ohms, by the way. So the UT71D has three resistors that are switched according to the current range and its maximum burden voltage is around 2 volts. Quite a lot if you ask me if we want to measure 3.3 volts MCUs. And we encounter a second problem if we want to measure current during deep sleep. Let's change this sketch and insert a deep sleep statement in front of the delay. 
like that, the sketch never reaches the delay 5000 statement because it goes to sleep before. The purpose of the sketch stays the same. Only its power consumption should be lower. If we use the 10 ampere range, it shows 13 milliampere during deep sleep. This is what we expect because the board should only consume milli or even microamperes. To get a better result for these small currents, we should switch the range. But then the ESP32 crashes as soon as it tries to reboot. Not acceptable at all. So what do we need? A small burden voltage in a wide current range. For a low burden voltage we need an amplifier and for a wide range we need range switching. What looked easy in the beginning become quite complicated. This is precisely what Dave Jones from EEV Block and Felix Rusu from Low Power Labs were thinking when they built these small devices. They use much lower resistor values to create a much smaller burden voltage and include an amplifier. Both sell around $100, including shipping, and both have an output for a voltmeter or an oscilloscope. The current ranger has an optional OLED display. If you are interested in how they work, you can watch video number 245. Another possibility is to spend $700 and buy this OT power analyzer. It is a combination of a power supply and a low burden voltage ampermeter. It does not need an oscilloscope to show the current curves. It has a built-in ADC and PC software. It is more comfortable than the other two, but you have to pay the price. This is why I was lucky when the viewers pointed me to a new device, the Power Profiler Kit 2 from Nordic Semiconductors. It should have similar specs as the OT, but a price tag of a microcurrent gold. Nordic is not a Chinese company, so how does this work? Here it is, much smaller than the OT and not in a nice metal box, but with a cool look. They use different colored LEDs to show the status in this window. Nice! To save cost they use simple DuPont wire connectors, which for sure is not too professional. But it also comes with software to display the curves. So let's check it out. Like the OT, it can provide up to 5 volts and 1 ampere, or measure current provided by different sources like a battery. This is ok for most of our projects. We can use a standard multimeter or a small resistor and an oscilloscope if we need more current. Or we buy this even more expensive child scope which goes up to 15 volts and 3 ampere. What are the typical scenarios? The first one is the same as before. I insert the ampere meter of the power profiler kit instead of the multimeter. I also connect the ground as a reference because the maximum voltage at all pins is 5 volts. Here is the cable I created. I can easily insert this 4 pin connector to measure the current consumption if powered by USB. This setup is convenient because we still have serial working. The setup in the Power Profiler software looks like that. Select Ampere Meter and Enable Power Output. Now we see the current consumption of the device. As expected, heavy peaks and a long deep sleep phase. And no brownouts. Very good. The software allows us to answer basic questions like How much was the average current during operation? Around 100 mA. And during deep sleep? 15 mA. So we already see that we have a problem with deep sleep consumption. It is way too high. And we see why the ESP created brownouts. The peak current was 478 mA. So the maximum burden voltage with the UT71 was 2 volts in the mA range. In the following setup, we remove the serial cable and connect the power profiler kit as a battery replacement. I also created a cable for that purpose with a 4 pin connector and a battery connector on the other side. Now we have to change the software setup to simulate a battery. We choose source meter and adjust the output voltage to 3.7 volts. The current diagram looks similar as before with one exception. 
The current draw during the deep sleep is now 80 microamperes, nearly 200 times less. Very good. As you see, we can get such information quickly by selecting the area we are interested in. We also can take a screenshot or export the data for further investigations. Did you recognize? The curve includes currents from 80 microamperes to nearly 500 milliamperes, without brownout. Why is that? The power profiler has five ranges that are automatically adapted to the current flow. If we look at the diagram, we see the respective resistors. 1 kilo ohm, 110, 11, 1 and 0 0.05 ohms. So the maximum burden voltage in all the ranges is around 0 0.05 volts. Neglectable for our purpose. The switching has to be done very fast. Otherwise, our ESP32 would create a brownout. Unfortunately, I had to remove the USB cable in this setup and we do no more see where the sketch consumes how much energy. Fortunately, we have these eight input pins. If we connect them to pins of our ESP32 and toggle them at specific locations in the sketch, we see where the current draw starts and ends. Pay attention. You also have to connect this VCC to 3.3 volts, otherwise it will not work. And of course, if you use it for an Arduino, you have to connect it to 5 volts. I set the pin to high after setup and to low again after getting the answer from the internet page. Now we can see where the sketch is and can measure the different times without a serial connection and see where the sketch draws which current. I revert to the setup with a USB cable and insert timestamps at the toggle points for a check. Now we can see that the time for the HTTP call is very similar. The time for the setup, however, is quite different. And here we see the difference. The ESP32 does some initialization steps before it starts our sketch. Let's do a last calculation. How long will our ESP run with a 3000 mAh battery using deep sleep? Because the duration of the HTTP calls differs, I would like to average 10 cycles. Unfortunately, the maximum range I can display and select in the highest resolution is only 2 minutes, only 5 cycles. If I want a longer period, I have to reduce the sampling rate. The average power consumption is roughly 52 mA. So the battery will last 58 hours. Not too much. Finally, we have all the needed information to start the optimization. One last question. What about measuring low currents? All devices mentioned that they are able to measure nanoamperes. It is not easy at all to measure such small currents and I doubt that a lot of people need this feature. I connect a 1 mega ohm resistor to the OT as well as to the power profiler. You see that the values are not very stable and that we see a lot of noise. At 2.5 volts we would expect 2.5 microamperes. The OT shows an average of 2.4 and the profiler 2.6 microamperes. For me both values are good enough. My verdict. The Power Profiler 2 is a handy tool for the engaged maker or the IoT developer. But how does it compare with the other tools? The microcurrent gold has no automatic range switching and will create brownouts if we want to measure deep sleep current. So we can only measure either operation or deep sleep. Not very comfortable. So I would only buy it for application areas where we do not have such fluctuating currents. As an advantage, it can also measure negative currents. The current ranger has an automatic range switching and it also displays average current on its OLED. So it is usable for our purpose. But you need an oscilloscope if you are interested in the curves. Its curves look very similar with one exception. It does not show the deep sleep current correctly. It is much too high. Why is this? Because its auto ranging function changes the measuring ranges as soon as deep sleep begins. So this part of the curve is in milliampere and this one in nanoampere. 
there is no indication in the oscilloscope. So you have to know what you do. In addition, it is more expensive than the Power Profiler kit. Because both of them come without software support, you have to do your calculations or use the math functions of your oscilloscope, which is not everybody's darling. So the clear winner in the $100 range is the Power Profiler Kit 2. I'm pretty sure that Nordic sponsors this device. After all, it is not their primary business. But for us makers, it is a good deal. Who should spend the money for an OT? It can source and measure more current. If this is needed, the OT is the right way to go. Its software is much more elaborated. For example, you can easily sample 10 cycles or more. It also can emulate different battery technologies. If time is money, in a professional environment, the OT is a good choice. Also because it is big enough that you do not need to search for it under a pile of things on a messy desk. For all others, this Power Profiler Kit is a nice addition to the lab. Maybe you put it on the list for a Christmas gift? Not absolutely needed, but nice to have. What do we have to remember? Measuring the current consumption of IoT devices is tricky. Burton voltage is the voltage drop across an ampere meter. It has to be small if we do not want to crash the devices. We can reduce the Burton voltage by reducing the measuring resistor value. Low Burton voltage means we need an amplifier. If we deep sleep our ESP chips, we have to measure from a few microamperes to 500 milliamperes. So we need automatic range switching. The two analog instruments need an oscilloscope to display current consumption curves. Digital instruments use software for this purpose. Digital instruments do all the calculations automatically. With analog instruments, you have to use the math functions of your oscilloscope. One last thing. Pay attention to ground loops mainly if you use an oscilloscope. All oscilloscopes are connected to the earth of your home. Better use batteries as the power source in this case. This was all for today. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.